Hey everyone, I'm Mike Sattel, and we are one week away from the May 4th SAT, and so it is time for a predictions video. I have made a bunch of these before for previous tests. There are lots of them on YouTube now. They seem to be very, very popular, and uh, we'll talk about all the stuff right here, but I do want to start off with just a little bit of a warning to beware of spoilers. I've, I've already watched two other prediction videos from other tutors, I'm not going to name names, and both of them gave away answers to the Blue Book practice tests. So this is one of the worst things that tutor can do and so just make sure that whenever you watch a YouTube video about the SAT you pay attention to where those questions are coming from read the title of the video read the description of the video mine will always tell you where the question is coming from we're gonna do two practice questions in this video and I promise you they are not gonna spoil anything these are these are questions that I wrote and they're really really hard but they're going to be really good questions to practice with without wasting any of the official resources so just uh, always a good, a good to remind you of that because those practice tests are the best resource you have for the SAT. So but big picture, we're also going to talk about what does it even mean to predict what's on the SAT? You know, I could just tell you like, okay, you're going to have y equals mx plus b, you're going to have quadratic equations, you're going to have verb agreement, but you should know that by now. We'll, we'll talk about if you don't what you should do. Um, but I also think it's important to recognize you should be able to predict what's on the test. No matter how much you've been studying, there are some things that are going to be predictable. So I'll talk about what that means. And then we'll get to some hard geometry. One of the biggest surprises, one of the most unpredictable parts of the March SAT was that there was very hard geometry questions that threw people off. So I'll give you some strategies for that and we'll work on two hard practice questions. So first let's again talk about what it means to even be able to predict the test. Uh, so based on how much you've been studying, you can probably already sense how many questions are going to feel familiar to you on the real test. So let's talk, talk about people who are novices. Maybe this is the first video you are watching for your May 4th SAT or maybe you've watched a couple others this weekend but you haven't really done much else. So unfortunately, when you take your test, uh, probably only about 25% of the questions are going to feel familiar to you. Things like uh, that you've seen in school before or you've done on a PSATs. So a lot of it is going to feel completely new and that's not good. So my advice is keep studying. Take a practice test with what's left of this weekend. Uh, take one during the week if you can. Go to the Blue Book app and do that and then watch my explanations, not just for things that you've gotten wrong, but for any question that you struggled with because there might be formulas or strategies or something you can do to make that question more predictable next time. But if you have been studying for a bit, you're already an SAT veteran. So if you've taken a couple of practice tests, you've seen some of my videos, you've done some lessons, maybe on Khan Academy or something, you probably, when you take your SAT, are already able to predict about 50% of what's going to be on there. But you might feel like there's another 50% that's just totally random to you, that you're like, I've never seen anything like this before. So my advice to you is that it, it, it's time to start changing your overall strategy and actually start using more SAT strategies. You're probably thinking of the SAT kind of like a lot of the tests that you take in school, where if you memorize the, fo the formulas or the rules or uh, just the, the dates and names, you're going to be prepared and be able to get 100%. The SAT is not like that. It is partly a memorization test, but it's much more a thinking test, a strategy test. And so this is where the videos that I've made in my free SAT strategy series are really going to help. Things like plug points into equations, Arithmetize, which we'll talk about a little bit later, dumb summaries for reading, trap answer choices for reading. That series really hits on those big ideas that are going to help you with questions that may feel completely new, but are actually just the old stuff in disguise. This is one of the SAT's most uh, powerful ways of kind of messing with you, is, is they take the stuff that you know really, really well, but they rearrange it and twist it up and dress it up so that it looks completely new to you. But strategies that are specific to the SAT can help you untwist all that stuff and help you get back to the basic ideas that you know. So again, we'll talk about that when we get to uh, geometry, but that is a very important way of going from just an SAT veteran to an SAT master, someone like me who knows pretty much anything that's going to appear on the SAT. But even people like me, are still going to have only about 90% of the tests be predictable. I've been doing this for 15 years and still when I take practice tests, there's always some stuff that completely surprises me. That doesn't mean I get it wrong, it just means that it's completely new to me and I have good strategies to help me with that stuff. And the most important thing you can do at that point is really work on your pacing. You really want to lock down that 90% so that it's completely predictable, you have no issues on it, you're not wasting time on it, so that you can free up time to work on the other stuff. So 
things that come to mind are like grammar, where we know what rules are going to be on the test and they're tested again and again and again. The first half of every math module should be really, really straightforward. You really shouldn't be um, wondering and, and struggling with those questions. You want that to just be like a speed round until you get to the hard stuff where, yeah, you're going to have to slow down, but most of it will still be stuff that is familiar, just dressed up in new ways. And then the other 10%, you have the time to really, really tinker with. So just to kind of summarize what I'm saying here, how do you predict what's on the SAT? You see more questions and you use more strategies. But some things are very hard to predict because there just aren't a lot of questions on those topics. And that kind of gets to the geometry. On any given SAT, you're only really looking at maybe like five or six noteworthy geometry questions. So how many of those even count as hard questions, right? So when you take your actual SAT, you probably haven't seen very many hard geometry questions because there's just so few of them. And so you're more likely to feel like that part of the test is unpredictable. But I think that's mostly in your head. And, and we have to kind of, again, use strategies to get around that idea and really start to think about those questions, the, the really weird twisted ones, as just different versions of the basic geometry that you do know very, very well. So let's talk about some big picture ideas that you can use for the geometry uh, questions on the test. The most important is just remember the reference chart, right? We are given a reference chart on every single math module. You just click the button in the top of the screen and it's going to show you all of these formulas. You don't need to memorize them. Personally, I think, yes, everyone should know the area of a triangle and the area of a circle, but fine, if you don't know them, they're given to you. I don't blame you for not knowing the volume of a cone, but again, it's given to you. There's no reason you should ever get a question wrong because you forgot that formula because it is there. So treat the reference chart like a menu of rules and ideas that you can always go back to when the questions get really, really hard. Odds are good you're still going to use this chart in some way. Specifically, and we'll talk more about this later, most uh, craziness on the geometry is really just going to come down to circles, rectangles, and triangles. And you can see that most of the formulas in this reference chart are involved those three shapes. So we're going to come back to that. But there, I, I did label this here as reference chart plus because there are some things that are not in the reference chart that you do need to memorize. So things like Sokotoa for trigonometry, surface area it doesn't really have formulas that we want to memorize. It's much more conceptual. So we need to understand what that means. Uh, some things are just very minor kind of like rules. For example, that a a line that is tangent to a circle is just going to graze that circle and then it's going to form a 90 degree angle with the radius of that circle. That can really matter. So if they tell you there's a tangent line in a picture, it probably matters that you're going to use this rule and this angle measure. Uh, we also need to know about sectors for uh, or slices of circles and, and the properties of those. We need to be able to recognize when we have isosceles triangles really quickly. And then occasionally some really obscure things like the rules about congruent triangles come up. But I do have a really comprehensive lesson on congruent triangles that you can use to refresh your memory on that. It's unlikely to come up on the test. If I had to predict, I would say it's probably not going to be the case you get a congruent triangles question, but it's possible. They are uh, available on the test and occasionally they come up. And if it's a hard one, then yeah, you don't want to be flustered. So watch that lesson and get caught up. But these are not really strategies. These are more like formulas. Again, this is that approach. If you're an SAT veteran where you still might feel like you, you have this stuff under control, but you're still not able to predict more than half of what's on the test. It still feels very new to you because you're thinking about little bite-sized pieces of information to memorize. What we need are strategies, ideas that we can use that are less about memorization and more about having a way out of trouble. So these important strategies are a little bit different. One of, we're going to use both of them in the, in the sample questions, but one of them is just to draw radiuses to points. If you have a circle, if you have a weird shape and it's got a circle involved in some way, odds are good that the right way out of trouble is to draw a radius from the center of the circle to one of the points that they've labeled on the outside. So it's just a good idea. You might not know why it's going to help you, but it probably will help you. Also, another idea is that everything is triangles, right? So any kind of weird shape, odds are good, it's going to involve triangles in some way. And that's really good for us because most of the formulas in that reference chart are about triangles. So we're probably going to have be pretty in good shape if we can get back to triangles. So let's look at some sample questions here and see if we can use these strategies to help us out. So here is a question that again, it's not from the practice test, so it's not spoiling anything. You can pause this video right now if you want and, and work on it on your own. I'm going to start talking about it in three, two, one. Okay. So the first thing I would see here is I've got a triangle or I've got a, a weird shape inside of a circle. And uh, I know though that with a circle, it's probably good to draw radiuses, right? So I'm not going to just draw random radiuses like horizontally. I don't know why people do this. Everyone does this where they just kind of draw a random horizontal radius, but 
Don't do that. Just make a radius that actually makes sense, right? So draw one that connects the dots. And when we do, we get to our other strategy. We can see here, everything is triangles. We just made two of them. So this is really, really helpful for us. And the reason why radiuses are so useful is radiuses are all the same length, right? So we didn't just make triangles. We made isosceles triangles. We know that those two sides of it are the exact same thing, which means that the angles opposite those sides are also congruent, which gives us a 35. And now we've got two angles in a triangle. We know there's 180 degrees in a triangle. They do tell you that in the reference chart if you forgot, but we can subtract out those two 35 fives, we're left with 110, which is now getting us closer to that X that we need, right? So we're getting there. Plus, we know that the other triangle on the other side is the same size. It's got the same radiuses and the same angles. So we also have a 110 there. Now I would start thinking about those basic shapes. We use triangles, we use circles a little bit, but let's bring in another circle, right? Because around that center point, there is another circle. And we can think of that as having 360 degrees and we have 110 accounted for already in both of the triangles. So we can subtract out and see what's left. And that's gonna give us our value of X, the 140. And that is our answer. So this, this question looked completely different from anything you've probably seen before when you started off, but at the end, what did we really need to do to solve this thing? We needed the rules of circles. There's 360 degrees in a circle. There's 180 degrees in a triangle. Those are some basic geometry ideas. It's just that you might not have looked at this and known that you were gonna use them. But if you have these moves of drawing radiuses and thinking about triangles, odds are good, you're gonna get back to those basic rules that you're more familiar with. Let's look at another question. This one's a little bit harder. Uh, so here you go. It's about a hexagon. Uh, and again, you can pause the, the video here and you can work on it. I'm going to talk about it in three, two, one. Okay, so we first have this hexagon. It has sides of length A and we're looking for the area. There is a formula that you could memorize if you really wanted to for the area of a hexagon, but gosh, I would never ever do that. Uh, it's just a waste of your brain space. Instead, let's use the stuff we know. So the first thing I am bothered by with this question is the fact that we have A as the dimension of this, this hexagon. That's very annoying. So I also see there's A in the answer choices. So I'm just going to say, okay, let's arithmetize here. Let's make up a value value for A so that instead of dealing with both the complicated geometry and the complicated algebra of working with this A, we're just dealing with the complicated geometry, right? So we have a dimension. And this is just a really good rule of thumb. A lot of the hard geometry questions, it, the SAT likes to just like strip away all of the dimensions so that you can't really even do geometry easily. If you can tell that the dimensions don't matter, like for example, if the, the, the constant, the value, the A is in both the picture, the story, and in the answer choices, then it doesn't matter. It's just a placeholder. So put something in that place, make it a little bit easier to think about. Then we're gonna use our other idea. There's no circle here, but we do know that everything is triangles. So we're not gonna work with a hexagon. We're gonna make some triangles, right? So connect some dots here. Let's just go straight across. And when we do, we discover that we have six equal triangles, right? They're all the same size. That's gonna be really helpful for us. So if you are gonna draw triangles, try to keep them as simple as possible. And when I look at these triangles, I need to learn more about them. And the first thing I notice is, okay, well, if I, if I have a, a point kind of in the middle, I can think of that as a little mini circle, right? So we have these six triangles kind of all attached at that center point. And I know that if each of them is the same, I can just divide the 360 degrees in a circle by six to get that each angle right up against that center point is 60 degrees. Now, I also know that these are isosceles triangles because we drew those lines in such a way that, of course, those two sides are going to be the same. But if they're, if they're isosceles triangles, right, those sides are equal, then that means the angles opposite are equal, right? So there's 120 degrees left in this triangle if we get rid of that first 60, and if we split that in half, we're left with another 60, meaning this isn't just an isosceles triangle, it is an equilateral triangle. All three sides are the same. This is really, really helpful for us. So my plan of attack here is to kind of ignore the fact that I've got a hexagon. We'll worry about that at the end. Instead, let's focus on the triangle. It's a simpler shape and I know things about it, right? I know how to find the area of a triangle. It's just one half base times height. But if I look at this, I don't know. Do I have the height? Do I have the base? Let's pull it out. Let's do a little sidebar here.
and draw our triangle. So on my scratch paper, on the real SAT, I would definitely be drawing everything I know about this triangle because even something like 60, I would put it on the shape so I can see it. Don't hold ideas in your head, right? Write things down on the page so that they come out of your head and then make room for new ideas. So I've got my side lengths of two that I made up. I've got my angles of 60 that we found. But in order to find the area of this thing, we need the height, right? We have the base, the base is two, but we don't have the height. So let's find that. We're just going to draw a line down the center. That creates a 90 degree angle for us and it splits that top 60 into two 30s. And now we can see how we're gonna solve this thing. We've got a 30, 60, 90 triangle and that is given to us in the reference chart. This is a very common way to solve complicated problems, not just using triangles, but using these very specific special triangles, right? So what's going on here, if you don't know how to use this formula, is the two that we made up it's gonna correspond with the 2x part of this, this formula, I guess. So that's because both of them are the hypotenuse, right? So that means that if the two is equal to that 2x, then x must be one. So that's the side opposite the 30. We could have found that just by kind of splitting the two, but uh, and then we could have done Pythagorean theorem actually, but we won't always be able to do that. So that's why I like this formula, because now we also know that if x is one, then the height, the side opposite the 60, is one root three or just root three. And now we have all the pieces we need to solve this uh, this problem, right? So we can do the area. We have the base of two. We have the height of radical three. If we get rid of the two with the one half and reduce those, we know the area of one of these triangles is radical three. But remember, there are six of them, so we have to multiply, which means that the area of the hexagon is six radical three. Now that's not an answer because remember what we did. We, we made up the value of a to start. So we've got to bring it back and kind of put that value that we made up for the question into the answer choices as well. So if I did that for choice A, it just means I'm substituting the two in for A, and then I'm resolving that answer choice, and it gives me 12, right? Three times four. So that's not six radical three, so I know that that's wrong. And if I do that for all of the choices, I will see that only choice D gives me the value that I want. That's how I know I'm right. And so I did remove the algebra complexity from this thing, but I have to kind of bring it back when I uh, get to the answer choices. Whew, this is a crazy question, right? So let's be clear about why I gave this to you. Am I predicting that you'll have a hexagon on your May SAT? No, no, I'm not predicting that. If it happens, amazing, I'm, I'm a wizard, but that's not what I'm predicting. Instead, I am predicting that there will be some hard geometry question that makes you draw a radius or use triangles in some unpredictable way, right? You may look at it and be like, oh my God, I've never seen anything like this before, but try to use those strategies. Draw radiuses, think about the reference chart, and then try to get to some triangles, and odds are good that you will make moves that move the question along. It won't necessarily look like this, but there are any topic, anything with geometry that's really weird, odds are very good. It's about triangles, radiuses, or just the stuff that's already in the reference chart. So keep thinking about that. That is the kind of thing that makes Makes you a master of the SAT. You are not memorizing the steps to solve the hexagon question. You are incorporating moves and strategies that are going to help you solve any kind of hard geometry question. And I do remember that some people commented on my last video about the March SAT that there was like a unit circle question and they'd never seen that before. But let's think about the unit circle, right? That's a circle and we get some specific angles that we're supposed to measure, uh, to remember, things that uh, we're supposed to memorize all along the circle. But remember, what are the special measurements that we're supposed to remember from the unit circle. 30s, 60s, 90s, uh, 45s, right? The same angle measures that are given to us in these special right triangles in the reference chart. So even the unit circle is really just triangles at the end of the day. So the triangle thing I think is really going to help you. Everything is triangles. Hopefully uh, that was a really good re refresher on some of the key geometry ideas and will help you with those hard questions. Uh, if you liked those practice questions, I have a lot more. Uh, I am, you might have seen my announcement that I do have channel memberships now. I have a whole set of hard geometry questions uh, now available to members. I'm gonna make one of them available to everyone. So just look in the description for that link to see what those questions are like. But this is a great way to get more practice. If you have run out of the practice test, run out of Khan Academy, the question bank, basically these are 
These are questions that I have written. They're questions that I use with my own private tutoring students that help us kind of target specific topics. So I'm gonna keep making these videos. I've already got over 100 in my uh, in my channel just for members, and they, they target things that I think are really, really important. So go ahead and check those out, and you can join on any video. Just uh, click the Join button, and for $4.99 a month, you can get access to all those questions, and you can cancel any time. So once the May SAT is over, you can just be done with me. That is totally fine. Um, these are really, really great, and if you are interested in private tutoring as well, uh, I will say that you, you know, go check out the, the rates and policies on my website because um, I'm running out of space already for the summer and for that August SAT. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you fill out that form soon so you don't miss out on a spot. Um, but regardless, if you just want to watch my YouTube, that's great too. I've got lots of free lessons on my channel already about the strategies and all of the official questions, and there are going to be more on the way as always. So please, if this really helped you, like, share, subscribe, comment if you have questions, and especially if these strategies actually help you on the May SAT, come back and let me know. If you, you know, use some triangles on a hard geometry question, I really want to know that this, this helped you out. So uh, for now, thank you so much for watching, and remember, when it comes to your scores, don't settle for less. Sattel for more.